The Pacific Islander Diabetes Prevention Program, PIDPP, is a year-long evidence-based lifestyle change program recognized and supported by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC. PIDPP was formed through a partnership between the Association of Asian Pacific Community Health Organizations and the Pacific Islander Center for Primary Care Excellence as a project funded by the CDC DP17-1705 grant to scale the CDC national DPP in underserved areas. Currently, PIDPP consists of 11 sites throughout the U.S. and U.S.-affiliated Pacific Islands. Aligning with DPP success standards, participants aim for 5% body weight loss, 150 weekly physical activity minutes, and lower HbA1c values. Listen in each week as we highlight PIDPP sites. Mililani Leui, Program Manager of PIDPP, sits down with site representatives to hear about their community stories and program impacts. This week, we spoke with Romeo, Marcella, Hemiko, Terry, and Korab of the organization the Kwajalein Diet Coalition, KDC. KDC is located in Kwajalein in the Republic of the Marshall Islands. In this episode, Mililani and the KDC team talk about the importance of tailoring the PIDPP curriculum to their community's needs, as well as discuss their ongoing community projects focusing on healthy eating and diabetes prevention and management. This is Marcella Savayo, and I'm currently uh, the uh, hospital administrator here in Ibai. And I'm also a lifestyle coach, master from Ibai as well. My name is Romeo Alfred. Uh, I am the, uh, the chairperson for the for the coalition, the Quadrilateral India Coalition. My full time job is uh, an HR for the telecommunication authority in in the Marshall Islands. As as far as uh, PIDPP, I serve as a backup. Lifestyle coach. Yeah, well, my name is Emiko Mojkar. Um, I'm the executive director for the Kwajalein Diab Coalition, and I'm also um, one of the lifestyle coach coaches here. Thank you. Oh, yeah, well, uh, my name is Terry Lord Jr., and I'm the uh, patient navigator for the coalition as well. Hi, my name is Korok Wanway. I'm actually the diabetes coordinator in the also a lifestyle coach here in Ibai. Again, thank you for introducing yourselves. My name is Mili Lani, and I am the program manager for the Pacific Islander Diabetes Prevention Program. So the first question is, why is a program like this important for the community you serve? I think the, the one of the primary reasons why this program is so important because it's one of a kind. Uh, there is no other program like it uh, in in the Marshall Islands, and also just the um, the the fact that the prevention aspect of things. This is really the only approach that we've seen so far that the government or the uh, the clinic in Ebay is using in in address the the growing problem with uh, diabetes in our community. And to add to that, uh, as Romeo mentioned, prevention measures and healthy food selection. Uh, we know that uh, the doctors have done a lot of effort in trying to tackle the diabetes issues here in, in EY, but have not really successful on it. And with this kind of program, it sort of continue what the doctors are or support what the doctors are doing at the clinic site. And uh, uh, it's this program, since they're all busy, uh, we saw that we didn't know how to come up with any program to help, especially the ones that are online on the borderline for diabetes. We didn't have any services or help for them. And this program really kind of answered our prayers where we, we wanted to prevent this diabetes since it's a, like a major issue, health issue here in Ibai. This program really was the answer that we didn't know that existed out there that fit our old way of living and put it back into practice again. The doctors can only do it so much for the community members. Why is it important to tailor the program to your community's specific needs? 
On the economic side, we do not have adequate resources to keep managing the disease after its onset. On the environmental side, we are a country that is vastly isolated from the rest of the world. So seeking medical attention outside of the Marshall Islands is not an option for a majority of our population. And on the, on the political side, for ages we've heard our leaders publicly declare our prevention is the only logical pathway to address the chronic nature of diabetes in, in our islands. Yet, very little is done in the area of prevention, if any. Nothing has been done in that area. So no, no concentrated effort has ever been placed on, on prevention. And to add to that, it's like community helping community. Whereas where, when it goes into politics or the government, it goes somewhere else instead of the community that really have needs for these kind of services or help. Is there any background information you would like to share to reinforce the importance of this program for your community? There's just so many uh, background information that we can share, but uh, the ones that really stand out, if we go back to uh, when we first started this organization, and we go back way be- uh, before uh, PIDPP, there, there was a, a lot of stigma uh, around the disease when we that we recognize, and so it was it was very difficult to come up with a, a strategy. We had uh, sat down together uh, so many times in in trying to come up with a, with a plan. It was quite difficult, and but having collaborated with so many organizations uh, outside of the martial arts, regionally and internationally. It opened us our eyes up to a uh, a, lo- a lot of things, including providing us hope that you know some level of help is out there. I, I can remember specifically the, the meetings on, on one of our strategic meeting uh, early on. Somebody within the group came up with this idea that from the movie Feel of Dreams, the catchphrase from that movie they say, "If if we build it, they will come." So that was essentially one of the uh, the catchphrases that provided with, with the uh, the hope and the concept that if we build something and work out of it, then we we'll soon soon enough we will find people coming to us for for help and as well as organization coming to us for support and uh, not only community members with the with the with the disease but also. Uh, people outside of the Marshall Islands, regionally and internationally, that will that can readily provide support. It was a matter of us bringing out the needs, the community needs. Locally, we don't have farming here in Uvai, but we we explore some ideas of importing from other places. There was really nothing to offer to assist people without high prices to get local food or the healthy food. It was through all these, uh, I guess, experiences that we were able to bring other outside people to come and try to help us with especially uh, local farming food. So re- currently we have the Taiwan farming happening in Ibai. I know it has also, uh, I guess, influence uh, our traditional leaders for the trying to get back to our local food and grow them. What impact has your site had on the communities you serve? I can start with uh, the impact that we have within the service provider itself. And I'm referring to the, uh, the clinic, the hospital as an organization. One thing that was very obvious early on was the... Uh, the number of people that, that were coming into to their uh, weekly clinics. There was only a few back then. How do we get people to realize that, you know, these are clinics that the, the population, the, the, the community needs to better understand not just how to probably manage 
the disease, but also strategies on how to prevent members of the, the community in the first place to get diabetes. If you compare the, that back then to now, so always practically crowded every, every time we, we you come in. Just seeing the number of how the, the, the number of people have increased from back then, it gives us hope that something good is happening. The services that we're, we're providing to the community is has an impact, a notable impact on the community. It has to do with educating people because hospital is kind of like a scary place for everybody to come and check, you know, where you are. But that we somehow that was east out and people felt comfortable coming to. A lot of our participants didn't even know what the height, what their height was and their weight. It wasn't important to them to know. Even if they're not sick, they can just come and check what their A1C is or they want to know what their weight are. Later on, we, we have decided to set up a, a public garden at the hospital, outside of the hospital. And we did that. We did that using the skills that we, we got from, from the classes that was done by uh, one of our uh, partners. And so we built this garden at the hospital. And when people started seeing that the, the, the garden was actually producing uh, vegetables and some of them came back and asked that we give them the, the pots, the, the, the seeds and pots that they had once refused to take because they, they weren't comfortable that they would be successful. These days, when you go to uh, Ujigu, a nearby community, uh, by the causeway on Ebai, you see people actually growing vegetables. It is encouraging to see these, these kind of uh, developments among the community. You know, after taking the classes, they're so excited that they plan to um, plant their own uh, vegetables and have their meals at home. I kind of look back and see the, the first organization that we partnered with, they have this idea that they want to introduce an all green uh, recipes to the community. Because we're from the community and we understand that the, to, a, to a great extent, the diet the, the population prefer is meat-based. And so we know already, because we're a member of the community, we know already that uh, this is not going to work. So instead of, of going straight to an uh, all-green diet, we introduced green to existing recipes that they were already using. Or ones that we, we, we introduced to them in our uh, cooking demonstrations. We said, well, you know, let's, let's do this slowly. Uh, even do palatability testing. So they, they're the one that, that select the, uh, the type of recipes that they, they like. So it's, it's all based on their palatability. What are some of your site's challenges and or best practices for recruitment, retention, and general <laughs> When we first started to introduce the home gardening, and mm -hmm. we brought in uh, partners from outside to help us uh, entice people into setting up their own home gardens. And, you know, one of the examples that stood out was, you know, we brought in gardening materials. And after we do uh, classes, teaching them the proper way of uh, doing home gardening. After the, even after the class, people still return the, uh, the, the materials, the supplies and materials that we distributed to them. And this was simply because the trials that they have done in the past weren't, weren't that successful. And so they were thinking, oh, here's another, another thing that they're trying to teach us, but it will never work because of the condition of the soils and, you know, all the, the limited uh, uh, areas that we have uh, within the community. So all these uh, gave a reason for members of the community to be discouraged. And so these are big challenges that we had, we had to face when we started out uh, this program as a group. You know, as, as we uh, share 
our experience with other partners and in in the region, you know, other groups that are also uh, doing uh, their own PIPPP program in their uh, their islands, places like Kushrai, Chuk. And so we all recognize that we have some common challenges when we first introduced the, the PITPP program. It all you know, boils around mostly retention. Early on when we, when we did the screening and when we form our classes together, we used to do a pre-select place that we, we do these, these programs. And we realized that we were losing attendees. You know, when we look closer at, at why we were uh, experiencing all these issues, we recognized that we weren't really focusing on what the participants want, what they prefer. And it was from, you know, all these sharing with uh, other uh, group in different islands, like, uh, for example, Koshwara. Koshrai was doing theirs at the at their churches, and so we we picked up on that and said let's let's try uh, the, the the strategy that that Koshrai is doing, and we started that and we realized that it was it, it was attracting more attendees and re- retention was a bit higher than when we were doing it in just a, a classroom that we had set up ourselves, and so we we made these changes to address the, the challenges as we, we come across. Sharing our experiences with groups from the neighboring islands help. I think the best we can say, we faced a lot of challenges uh, in addition to what Romeo said when we started. And uh, I guess I'd like to say we learn as we go or went. You know, holding our classes to an assigned place wasn't really working out well for us. So we started with the work site and yeah, these were also ideas from other sites. And uh, for EY alone, we also learned that when we go through the churches, it worked best for us. So we that's where instead of creating a classroom and calling everyone to come to it, a regular classroom setting, uh, we went to where they were comfortable with. So that was their environment, church environment in a way. I think looking at our participants uh, wants and need kind of help us with many of our challenges. Another aspect of uh, what we uh, picked up on was uh, all of us are have, have full time jobs. It's it's quite challenging making the time and effort to uh, apply to the uh, this program. But considering that we were able to develop this program and sustain it over a uh, more than 10 year period that i th- i think that's that, that that's something to be proud of what's your future projects and our goals does your site have for advancing diabetes prevention and promoting healthy lifestyles one of the things that we were seriously considering is institutionalizing these program so that they complement existing setup or programs within an organization. And for example, right now we focus a lot on including our program in church activities. We've been talking about now that Marcella is a master coach, maybe teaching lifestyle coaching in, in the churches. We can have a group of lifestyle coaches within each of the church den- denominations. Mm-hmm. We feel that institutionalizing this program into existing programs within each of these organizations will help sustain this program over the long period. And so we do have existing uh, setup with the government that have, you know, different focus. I guess using the data that we've collected over this five-year five year period to use when we uh, approach our government for either additional funding or just the existing funding that we're receiving from them, but we focus it to, so it can also include uh, the PIDP program. In terms of uh, the way forward, we have a fully established relationship with 
the uh, the clinic here. So the clinic focuses primarily on managing diabetes, while uh, KDC focuses on uh, the prevention aspect of the of the disease. And so this is something that we had set up among ourselves, us and the uh, uh, the clinicians here at the hospital. It's something that the both group uh, supports. It will continue to be one of our our strategy forward. We thank Romeo Marcella, Hemiko Terry, and Korab from the Kwajalein Dia Coalition for speaking with us during this week's segment. Please stay tuned for our next site highlight.